game's so hard. I need some backup. What are Keyblades doing? Yellow. Keyblade. My bearded brother. Listen, I need your help. Oh, hey, dude. What's up? I'm playing Zombies at My Neighbors, and I need a second player, and I think you're just the guy for the job. Zombies? Wait, they did what to your neighbors? Uh, oh, you're, oh, you're talking about the SNES game. I don't know, dude. Isn't that one supposed to be kind of hard? Yeah, it is kind of hard. But yeah, I think I'm going to pass. Keyblade. Yeah, thanks anyway. Keyblade. Yeah, catch you later, dude. We should do brunch next week. Bye. Keep Keyblade. Yep. Damn. Well, what else is available? Finally, we have no interruptions. Oh. Phone call. Pragmatic. Hello? My Tendo. Listen, I'm playing Zombies Ain't My Neighbors, and I need your help. No, sorry, dude. I'd love to, but I've got some other things planned. Yeah, maybe another time. You too, Mike Tendo? You too? Hi. Right. What's up, Rack? Matt Made. I know you want to play some Zombies Ain't My Neighbors. Zombies Ain't My Neighbors? No, I'm about to hard pass on that one. No. Cool. Alright. Cool. Who's left? Jeremy, get out of my house. Wait a minute. That just might work. Hey friends, I'm Pragmatic and I'm to talk about video games. And the game I want to talk about today is... Zombies Ate My Neighbors. Now zombie slaying wasn't as commonplace in the 90s as it is today, but there were a few games that did touch on the subject. One of them being Zombies Ate My Neighbors. But it did it in its own little quirky way. And today we're going to talk about that. So let's get into it. Zombies Ate My Neighbors was developed by LucasArts and published by Konami in 1993, and was well praised for its unique gameplay as well as its notable difficulty. You'll find yourself embodying one of the two characters, Zeke or Julie. Zeke is a rad dude with attitude, sporting a skull shirt, hair combed high, and 3D glasses, which has to make aiming for him a literal nightmare. Julie? Julie knows how to take it down a notch. You can also play with two players, which I would definitely recommend, as it makes the game that much more fun, and it means you don't have to die alone. The theme of this game is just what the title suggests. There are zombies, and they seem to exist for the sole purpose of eating your neighbors. And I'm not sure how loose of a definition the term neighbor is, as you can save all kinds of them. You've got a soldier who isn't pulling his own weight in the situation. Your teacher, I guess? Cheerleaders, tourists, and a dog? These zombies ain't eating that dog. You're not getting this one. He's my buddy. Oh. That's pretty cute. Mm. Zeke and Julie must have a very special bond with their neighbors, as if all of them are to be eaten, they give up. They just... they give up. This makes for a pretty simple explanation of the game. Stop him! Don't let him get eaten, you dumb! Luckily for you, disposing of these zombies is fairly simple. A single shot from a water gun is enough to disintegrate these undead fiends. Yep, you just send a few milliliters of water their way and they're just like... What even? Unluckily for you, the title is lying to you. Because it's not just zombies that have it out for your sweet, sweet neighbors. It's a whole bloodthirsty platoon of creatures, including, but not limited to, Giant ants, giant babies, killer plants, demonic dolls, and who could forget the second cousin of zombies, mummies. While these other creatures aren't as easily defeated, you do have quite the selection of weapons to combat them, such as weed whackers, bazookas, holy relics,
cans of soda, and potions. Be wary of that last one, though. <laughs> also, you'll get a lot of these decoy clown things. Be sure to keep those handy because they'll be your best friend in a pinch. And that may have been the strangest sentence I've ever said. This game will have you traveling to distant lands in order to save your neighbors. Once again, stressing the definition of neighbors. What are you doing in this ancient pyramid, lady? What made you think this was the ideal place to go? I don't mean that lightly though, as there are 48 stages in this game, and that's not including some bonus stages. The sheer amount of stages is one layer of difficulty in this game, but progressing each level is pretty simple. Now that we know the objective of saving your neighbors that just kind of stand around waiting for death, we have to go find them. You'll have a mini-map that will let you know if you're close to a neighbor or not. Make sure you find them before an enemy does or they'll be gone forever unless you can get a high enough score to earn a bonus neighbor. They'll usually just be standing around, but some neighbors can be behind locked doors. I'm coming to get you, baby! This also leads to another big staple of this game, keys. Keys can be found pretty frequently throughout the stages, however this game really likes to base itself around the element of chance. Sometimes unlocking doors and cabinets can net you some good stuff like money or weapons, while other times there can just straight up be a cabinet monster that automatically hurts you. Adding a health pack item was a good decision for a format like this. There are other ways to open doors, such as using a bazooka or smashing through doors and walls when a potion grants you the monster form. You'll soon find yourself gradually leaving your neighborhood and into more foreign areas. You'll be searching for your neighbors in malls, ancient castles, dusty tombs, and here. This level is what anxiety looks like. You'll find yourself getting lost in this maze of hedges, all while being pursued by these guys. You're pretty much guaranteed to lose a few neighbors in this stage, as a lot of the times you'll have to use a bazooka to blast through the parts of the stage. But the constant threat of being chainsaw leaves you with a choice. Do you blast through and try to add some ground? Or do you sacrifice a few shots and knock this guy out for a little bit? And if this all wasn't enough, sometimes the neighbors are just kind of hidden. Just seriously, screw this level. With how many items this game gives you, it seems like it'd be too easy. But the sheer difficulty of the game drains your resources, and that's kind of what gives this game its notoriety. As the levels go on, naturally it becomes harder to find your neighbors, and in turn harder to save them. But rather, it's the variety of enemies that really create the challenge. It's easy to become so overwhelmed with it all that you'll drain your health packs and your popsicles in no time. And trust me, the less you have at your disposal, the harder it gets. Jeremy? Yeah? This game's hard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You do have some higher power items at your disposal, like a weapon that wipes all the current enemies off the screen, and potions that do a variety of things like invisibility, a monster form, and a health restore. And sometimes, sometimes it just kills you. That's the element of chance I was talking about earlier. The amount of risk opening something or drinking a mystery potion can have makes for a pretty big challenge in itself, but I feel if you're able to ration your health items and conserve helpful items wisely, then this aspect of the game doesn't make it unfair, just a challenge to be overcome, especially with how generous the game can be when it comes to giving out items. The sheer amount of enemies, bosses, and levels in this game isn't a sign of bad game design. In fact, there's only two things I would ever fix in this game adding a continue system, and lighter punishments for losing your neighbors. When it comes down to the actual objective of the game, saving your neighbors, the game is mostly fair about their location. It even usually gives you a free neighbor somewhere near the beginning. But as the game goes on, there will be situations where you can't get to a neighbor simply because you don't have a bazooka or something to break down a wall. And I can't really say if that warrants such a punishment. Like I said, the placement is mostly fair, but if you keep losing neighbors to unfair placement or simply by not being able to reach them in time, you get whittled down to one. And that's where it gets a bit rough. The game can't give you a free neighbor if you're down to only one neighbor remaining, as you'll instantly finish the level. So this leaves you at the mercy of finding the neighbor before the AI does. But with how many levels there are, it's likely you won't reach them all the time every time. And what do you get? An instant game over. I don't think the punishment should be that severe. Why not just take a life from you, or a bit of health? 
or at the highest form of punishment, give you a game over, but have a continue system to let you try again. And I get that there is a password system, but it's every few levels and you don't restart with what you had. And you do not want to go into these higher levels bare bones. A continue system could have made this game a little more fair in my opinion. But something like that doesn't discredit the quality and sheer fun of the game. And you know my golden rule, the point of a game is to be fun. And this game is loads of fun! I don't care how many times I die, I love playing this game. It's a simple joy playing that makes a game like this worthwhile. Thanks so much for checking out the video. I want to give a special shout out to the dudes who helped make this intro possible. Friends like Keyblade Smasher, Mike Tendo, and Matt Maid. They are some seriously talented people that I recommend you check out. I'll leave their links in the description. Also a big thanks to my fiance Tiffany for helping me get some of the gameplay footage and to Jeremy for simply being Jeremy. If you'd like to share and subscribe, it helps me out and lets me know that you enjoyed what you saw. Gently click that like button if you feel so inclined, and as always, keep it practical.